Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to a fabulous, fabulous day. This is a very cool day, very important day, Veterans Day. And, you know, for many of you out there, I know you know that many of your family members served. I know for me, I was talking about my Aunt Fran last week and what a role model she was to me. She served in World War II. Um, I also really think about uh, my friends and and members of uh, my nuclear family that have served and continue to serve. Um, Many of them we have hired here on the show. Our little Heather was in the military as well. So today, it's just one of those days to remember, for me at least, uh, as the host of the Dr. Pat show, why I can get up in the morning and not think about or be afraid of the things that my dad was afraid of when he woke up. Uh, years ago, uh, when there was such a threat for those folks coming out of World War II and looking at, you know, what they were faced in the world and uh, nuclear weapons back then. We didn't even talk about, you know, shutting down the nuclear arms race. It was who could get there first. So today, uh, I think all of us can raise our hands up in much joy and appreciation for the folks that are currently serving, have served, and for those of you out there, uh, family members, you know, mothers, daughters, sons, you name it, that are in that venue. And I want to give a shout out. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, you bet. You know, I don't know about you, but I have uh, my Uncle Al, who was on the show, mm-hmm. Uncle Ralph, mm-hmm. Uncle Al, mm-hmm. and, you know, my, my Aunt Fran, you know, they would tell fabulous stories. Storytelling was so much a part. And as a matter of fact, you know, last time I got to visit my uncle, the stories that he told about our family, our family heritage, and he revealed to me that uh, somehow nobody wanted to mention that my grandfather was born in Brazil and that my grandfather's, my grandfather on my mom's side, But then my other grandfather had a brother who went to Brazil. So, you know, isn't it interesting what we learn about storytelling and what we learn from creating our own happy ending? Now, why is this important? Well, Benny, you and I were just talking about the football, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Seahawks had a rough uh, game this weekend, but it was all right. That's what you said. See, you created your own happy ending to that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, But that's why today's show is all about storytelling alchemy. Write your own happy ending. There you go. Yeah, with Renee Demoiselle joining me here today. And really, when I got this book, or even saw that this book was coming, I thought about a lot of things. But one of the things I was really struck by is how important storytelling is in the world. Now, Benny, Here's the deal. Everybody talks about social media. We only have uh, seven seconds. That's not the deal. Podcasting and the future of podcasting and the future radio is all about storytelling. And it may be different, but if you have a positive talk radio network and a positive talk radio show, I will guarantee you that we are in the business of writing our own happy ending. Renee is joining us here today as the author of this fabulous book. This is about passion for empowering people. This is about liberating souls. This is about her willingness to step out in the world and say, wait a minute. I am, look it, I am mixing up some stuff that's going to help people shift and change, whether it's spiritual retreats 
events, whether it's overcoming serious trauma, and you'll hear about that today. Uh, what is it about us that enables us to move beyond some horrific things in our lives and literally free ourselves from the bondage of bad endings? Renee, great to have you. Dr. Patton, I'm excited to be here today. Yeah, what do you think about that freeing ourselves from the bo- from the bondage of bad endings? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a matter of perspective. I've always said that how you think about your story is more important than the story itself. So if you can change your perspective, just like Benny did earlier with the with you know, he said something about a losing game, and he said, no, nope, not worried. We're still good. We're the, we're the number two. And uh, so it, it's about that perspective of looking at it positively like your show does. Well, you know, it does. And what I love about this is, you know, we, we live in a pop culture world here in the United States. And one of the things that Hollywood in particular is really struck by is where they go to the edge, right at the edge. And they have to decide what do we want to do with either this movie and, you know, movies are about storytelling or television series. Do, do we want to always show up at a happy ending? So here, here's what happened. I spent the weekend with some family and friends, and one of the women uh, there, her, her mom was there. And so it was interesting to watch whoever had control at a remote control. And so if, if, if Johnny had the remote control, it was going to be the football game. But if myself uh, and uh, Yvonne had the, the remote I could say the words Hallmark and then I would get the Hallmark channel. And I got to tell you this time of year, if it isn't about happy endings and giving you a new perspective, I don't know what is. But I want to ask you this question. Um, I have been criticized over a 15 year career doing this for being Pollyanna Patty. So one day I had to share what my life was like. My mom committed suicide when I was six. I was abused in Catholic boarding school as a young child. I was beaten every night. Um, I was homeless at 17. And by the time I was 19, I knew what it felt like to be in the back of a police car. When they called me for my high school reunion, Renee, this year, they thought I was dead or locked up. So let's talk about it doesn't matter so much what your past is about. How important is it to, to really look at our future? And what kind of challenges do you have to overcome to take this venue on? Oh, I, I, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> it's a big subject. Absolutely. I mean, and what you're saying about your childhood. So I, I could be accused, too, of being this, you know, like, well, not everything's about a happy ending. And it's not because all of our feelings count and everything that we've experienced is uh, important to our lives and to what we create for ourselves. But you've already been to the dark. <laughs> you've <laughs> already experienced the darkness of life, uh, of life as I have. Um, mm-hmm. And this is a way to say, yeah, well, that that those things happen. That's the data, right? But my feelings about those things, that's the drama. And that's not necessary. That's not a necessary part of it. So I can look back at my childhood trauma, which included uh, abuse when I was sexual molestation when I was very small and rape as a teenager and, you know, a lot of stuff that's hard to get over. But I really have this feeling that we make our lives. We determine our future. You know, I'm the captain of my soul. (laughs) Um, So... uh, this storytelling is a way of reframing, reframing what the difficulty is so that you can look forward to a more positive future. Yeah. No matter how dark your past was. Yeah. I love that you wrote this book. And, you know, for me, as I'm reading the book, I'm really planning as we, um, we move into 2019. Now, I got to tell you, here's a little story I'm telling right now. You're going to love this because this is a little bit about alchemy too. Um, so I am a quadruple Sagittarian, right? 
And so I be, I get emails from guests that I have on the show. I get emails from astrologers all over the world. And so recently now I get these emails and they're saying, Pat, you have got to be breathing a sigh of relief. Now, look, I don't follow my daily astrology stuff, but I am fe- feeling and breathing a sigh of relief. But I didn't know why. So one of the stories is, did you know now that Jupiter is moved to Sagittarius and will be there for a year and it hasn't been there in 12 years. So here I am looking back 12 years ago and I I started to create a story about 12 years ago and then I start and then I was rereading your book and I said I am not going there. What can you do to help us in shaping in cultivating this new perspective for storytelling alchemy? What have you learned? Oh, so much. I mean, um, I, I have, this started with me doing um, classes for a local women's charity in Phoenix, and I called it at the time Transformational Storytelling. Mm. And I taught, it was just a three-part class where we learned about the history of story and why it's so important and valid and how it reaches our subconscious, which is where we make things happen. And then... We, we did some writing together, and I've had women who have just, you know, healed old wounds, and this one woman, my favorite, she wrote a story um, that came from a dream that she had where um, she was raised in, a, in an environment where women were not to be speaking too much. They, you know, don't make too much noise, don't speak out, your opinion doesn't matter, and this was the culture that she was raised in. But she had so much to say, and she had this dream where there was a big snake or serpent of some kind in her throat, and she pulled it out of herself hand over hand um, and became the victory, you know, the the slayer of that dragon. And she now speaks all over the country on women's rights and women's health and things like that. So it's just... There's, there's really no limit. I have dealt with, using this practice, I have dealt with everything from, you know, deeply broken heart to that childhood trauma that I discussed to my fear of the dentist. It can mm-hmm. be little things, too. So, uh, you know, I just find it tremendously helpful to, m- to me, and I know that I've seen it help transform others as well. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about right out of the gate what you ask or the question you ask or or by the way, what you say. You say there are two pathways for our journeys. And I love that you nailed this, right? Cuz I want to talk about this cuz if we're not looking at this right out of the gate, we're going to miss something. And you say there are two pathways. You say there's the mund- the mundane and the magical. And right. let's talk about what that means, because a lot of times we don't know, first of all, that these are even a pathway. But secondly, we don't know that there are two options. Let's talk about it from your perspective, because before you even begin the book, you're saying, OK, folks, here we are. You're on a crossroads. Yeah. Uh, and there are there. And I find the best way is- to incorporate both pathways, but what I mean by the mundane pathway is just the physical, you know, legwork that needs to be done in order to accomplish anything in your life. Um, you know, if you're if you're looking for a job, you better make sure that you have honed your skills for that particular position and that you have a good resume out there and that you're checking the want ad. And that's just the mundane, everyday stuff that we have to do to make things happen in our lives. But there is another energy out there that is useful to influencing the outcome of things. And so that, I, I call it magical, but it really is, to my understanding, an energy that exists throughout the world for everyone, everywhere. And we're all using it. But if you use it consciously, then you can influence the things in the direction that you want your life to go. Um, So that's what I mean by the magical part of it. And so the storytelling alchemy combines both. There's a lot of legwork to be done. There's journaling. There's, you know, digging back into your memories. There's learning uh, writing techniques. 
There's things like that that are sort of, you know, everyday mundane things that you should be doing to help yourself. And then there's the magical aspect, which is the creation of the story. That's that part of that is magical. The meditations and journey work that I have you doing, the dream interpretation stuff. So there's like a combination of things that makes this very powerful. And and you can do just the mundane and still be successful, but you I really suggest to add the magic because that gives it a lot more a little more power. Yeah. Um and also, I mean, this really leads to the conversation that really kicks this off. And that is I think in the book you talk about look. Do we even know the stories we're telling ourselves? You know, one of the hardest things that I'm, I'm discovering is uh, my uh, discovering who I am and what the stories are I tell myself. But also, I'm also realizing that, you know, there are people in the world, some of them close to me, and they have stories they tell themselves. I, I realize my job is to really figure out what's going on within me even if I allow myself to be affected by other people. And I'm asking you this question because we're getting ready to just leapfrog right into the holiday. I don't know about you, but I'm on the East Coast here for another week, and we have got Christmas decorations up already here. Yep, here too. (laughs) Yeah. So let's talk about what you help people with so that we basically stay within our own hula hoop about this. And I don't know. We have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, don't we? Oh, yes, absolutely. And so a a big part of the practice is that self-exploration, finding out maybe what is it that is stopping you from moving forward in whatever your endeavors are. Um, And and very often, especially if there has been childhood childhood trauma or, or difficulties and tragedies in your past, when we experience trauma in youth, it's, we very often develop these very deeply held beliefs that may not be conscious to us. I had, a, this is one of the first uh, breakthroughs that I had with this practice, I had a deeply held belief that I was unlovable, that I couldn't be loved. And um, this practice absolutely shattered that belief for me, first brought it to the surface so I understood that I really did believe that. You know, I could say intellectually all I wanted that, of course, I could be loved. I know people that love me. But I had this belief deep down that I was acting on from my subconscious. And that was bringing, you know, that was bringing men into my life that were going to leave me and harm me and not and not love me. Mm. And once I was able to bring that to the surface and shatter it and prove it's false, that I now have an extremely wonderful, loving relationship. And that's how, that's the difference it can make in your life. That's how powerful, you know, digging that stuff up is. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think there are a couple things too here, Renee, that I was also struck by in the book. Um, and that is the beautiful use of rituals to either change something or uh, to charge something, meaning energetically charged something. Um, uh, I think you call it power it up. And I think you're talking about a bag at this point, but the book is filled with not just, um, not just rituals, but exercises and poems and, and so much to help people move beyond the beyond. Um, This is not a book that is one size fits all. How should people be guided to one, where do I begin? And two, find the right process for them. Right. I am um, always telling my clients that, you know, you need to trust your intuition. We all have a beautiful inner wisdom. And it, it takes time and practice to begin to really trust that voice that, you know, that inner little whisper voice that is telling you what's right and what's maybe not so right. Um, There are a lot of different practices in the book. I encourage meditation. I encourage the keeping of altars and honoring of um, spirits like land spirits or gods and goddesses um, and that sort of thing. And 
I encourage throughout the book, over and over again, people to feel their way through this, to, you know, to look for and pay attention to the emotions that are coming up, the thoughts that come up, and, and sort of dive into it and allow the things that are coming up to them to take form. Um, it, it, it's very much about learning to hear that inner voice so that it can guide you more, you know, accurately through your life in, in the way that you, in the, in the direction that you choose. Mm-hmm. I, I want to talk with you a little bit, if we could take a moment here before the break. Um, the book is filled with practical magic, but it's also filled with great stories. Um, you actually talk about the dentist story in here, too. Um, yeah. You work with people all over the world. I would like, I, I know this is hard to, to do to generalize, but if I were to ask you today, what do you believe is on people's mind most from a story perspective? What might you say to that today? Um, oh, it's, it is hard to generalize like that, I know. but I, I think, you know, at the heart of everyone's transformation, at the heart of what I've worked with most with my clients is that childhood trauma. It is, mm. um, tragedies from their past that, that create in them a hesitation, a fear, or a belief that somehow they're not good enough or they can't do something or they can't accomplish something with their lives. And I say there is no limit. And, you know, once you, once you understand how, um, how truly wise you are, how truly limitless your spirit is, you know, there's nothing you can't do. Like, so for me, it's, it's kind of about that. It's kind of about freeing people from the idea that they are limited in what they can do with their lives. Hmm. That's, it's a powerful you know, I guess message. That's about my empowering people and yeah. liberating souls. That's, that's my little motto. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I totally get it from my perspective. And I think it was one of our hosts a number of years ago, uh, Gary Douglas, who was on the show. And he asked a question. He said, he said, Pat, what if you were not to try to solve the problem? What if you were to simply ask what else is possible? And I haven't stopped asking that question. And I have to now remember to really look at that question, what else is possible? Because in the world of possibility, there are infinite stories that we can create, right? Absolutely, yep. Infinite stories. Start with your desire. Where do you want to be two years from now? And then make your story reach that. Yeah. I want to ask you this question before we uh, take a short break, if we could. Uh, how can people find out more about you, number one? Um, and then uh, let's make sure that we let folks know how they can get a copy of the book as well. Absolutely. So um, they can find out more about me and find a copy of the book at Um And uh, I'm also on Facebook. Uh, I have a, um, an author page as well as my personal page and I think I have a few friend requests available left. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's, those are pretty much the, the places awesome. that I appear most often. Awesome. We're going to take a short break. We come back. We're going to talk about alchemy. We're going to talk All about right. alchemy from very, very ancient, ancient, ancient practices of alchemy. And what does alchemy mean? Is this a book for witches? Is it a book for goddesses? Is it a book for people that want to have a better life? Is this a book that opens up the door so that regardless of what's showing up in your life today, you can create a new story, a story that has the alchemy of energized, unlimited possibilities. And yeah, a happy ending. Let's take a short break, everyone. When we come back, we're going to be talking about all of that And I'm just going to be a little bit curious to find out 
if Renee had any of those aha moments along the way to writing it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Huff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716 or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Interested in deepening your spiritual practice? The School for Esoteric Studies offers online training to spiritual seekers from all paths of life and individual coaching. Our courses synthesize Eastern and Western spiritual traditions based on meditation, study, and service applied to everyday life. To learn more about our courses and services, please visit www.esotericstudies.net. How often do you find yourself wondering, why me? Learn a new shift in perspective to see how everything that takes place in your life is actually working for you and shifting you towards your own enlightenment. Tune in to Blank Enlightenment Radio with Misty Thompson each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit MistyMThompson.com. That's MistyMThompson.com. Knowledge Book Radio with Marge Potasik has a special gift for everyone out there. To receive three chapters of the Knowledge Book as a special gift, send your email to mmjp99 at gmail.com. That's M as in Mary, M as in Mary, JP99 at gmail.com now to receive this fabulous, fabulous gift of the Knowledge Book. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's great to have you. For more information about us, go to the drpatshow.com or transformationradio.fm or transformationradio.com. Uh, in about a week or so, you're, those of you that are part of our newsletter, and, and please, if you're not, please just sign up. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going back old school, as Benny likes to say. We're going to be kicking it up old school here. And what that means is we're going to go back to our one of our crust busting venues where we gave something away once a month. So every month we had like a monthly raffle for sort of like uh, uh, at then it was iPod. Now it's like you give me like a tablet now. And so we're going to bring some of that back. Um, the other thing to look forward for in 2019, as we go through so many of the changes you all wanted us to make, the holistic makeover is making, whoa, a comeback. So you're going to hear lots about that. Today, though, it's all about Renee. Uh, Renee, one more time, please tell folks how to get a copy of the book and how to find out more about you. And then, Benny, we're going to give you a, a copy of the book away as well. Um, yeah, so you can find me at ReneeDamoiselle.com, and right on that homepage is a button to um, buy the book and also have it signed by me, and I'll send it out to you with a signature. I love it. I love this book, folks, because this is all about storytelling. We are actually, um, the reason I was so drawn to this is because I had a little problem with um, a, a media person, one of the media uh, firms, the, one of the media firms out of New York uh, had looked at us for one of our, our clients. You know, we bring on hosts and co-host the host shows on our network. And after looking at us, he said, you know what, you people you are, I love it when they start that you people thing, right? That's like, yeah. Yeah, I like it. You people, you are, 
you know what you are? You are the Disney of podcasting. And I thought, okay, I don't know if that's like good. I, does that like, what does that like mean? And I just kind of said, oh, oh. And he said, yeah, you're like the Disney of radio and podcasting. You know, for 15 years, you, you people have been telling stories that not only have happy endings, but they're real things that people can do to change their lives. So, of course, I kept that. But here's my question for you. As we go through life, it's not always easy. 15 years at this in a, in a career I knew nothing about, paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy airtime. My friends want to have me committed. Uh, ended up with a 14-year relationship, ended up in divorce. So what I'm trying to say is not all stories go through this beautiful Pollyannish kind of journey. Mine didn't, and I don't think yours did. How do we get through those shadow times? And Benny, let's give a copy of the book now. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. Those shadow sides, right, Renee? And I know you do retreats. So tell us about them. And can they have happy endings too? Uh, I believe so. So the thing is that there is no life without, you know, that doesn't have tragedy or difficulty or darkness throughout. You know, there's no... You know, when I say write your own happy ending, I say write your own happy ending for a particular story from your life that has been causing you difficulty. But there's no, like, permanent happiness because the, why are we here? You know, <laughs> all of our emotions are valid. And when you are going through and you're, if you're in the middle of that difficult time in your life that you're struggling I, you know, I kind of encourage to embrace the struggle, feel the feelings. They're valid. They mean something for you. They're necessary. And, and you know, when you are able to have some perspective, then look back on it and, and see if there's another way to look at it. Perhaps you can find gratitude in something that happens. Um, for example, let's just take my crazy divorce. <laughs> for one example, <laughs> while it was going through it, it was terrible. And I, I remember racking up, you know, uh, $700 a month in phone uh, bills at the time because I was calling my friends and crying so much and how horrible it was. And now I look back and I am so grateful that I made the decisions that I did and that I, I toughed it out and I went through it because it was the best thing for me, for my daughter, and even for my ex-husband, it turned out to be the best thing. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, you have to know while you're going through it that your feelings are okay, that every bit of grief, anger, guilt, shame, sorrow, whatever it is that you feel is valid and okay, and that you will eventually feel something else, and then you can make it a good thing. Wow. I mean, part of this, too, is uh, I want to get back to what you say about this, because, you know, I know for a lot of people, uh, they hear me talk about my um, my the part of my journey, my life where I was homeless, albeit it was short, very grateful for the angels that showed up in my life. Then Um, it wasn't a long period of my life, but it is one I'll never forget. And they always ask me about it. And, and so recently I've been asked, do you, what do you remember from that? Number one, you were so young. And what did you learn from it? And I thought to myself, I remember it like it was yesterday, Renee. Mm -hmm. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember coming home uh, when I was 17 and all of my things were thrown on the front lawn. I remember that. And then I also remember intuition and the role intuition played. I don't recommend it for everyone. If you can avoid even coming close to being homeless, I don't recommend it. But I learned some things about myself that I didn't know I was capable of. What do we learn from storytelling? And what do we learn from changing our stories? Well, 
and that that you do hit the nail on the head right there. It's about learning about yourself, discovering that so you survived that difficult part of your life, and I would equate that to you know you the you became the hero in your own story, and you became the one who who had to save the day, just like in the fairy tale, the you know the valiant the valiant knight saves the day and slays the dragon, and you did that for yourself because you came out of it and and you survived in whatever way that was, and you realized you were strong, and you realized you were resilient, and you realized you were smart. And that your intuition was something to be listened to. And those things right there, everybody has those things. Everybody. But most don't know it, especially if they're going through difficulty. Um, you know, so for me, um, I learned, first of all, when I talked a little bit before about how I, I had a deeply held belief that I couldn't be loved. And in the moment that that belief was uncovered and proven false, I understood that I was nothing but love, and I have not ever once felt unloved since. That's huge. <laughs> that's that's a gigantic boost to anyone's you know well being. Um, so there's things you know, and then there's I learned, and and again, let's go back to a little bit of a mundane thing through right. my exploration of my fear of the dentist. I came to understand a whole new way of taking care of my teeth. <laughs> so that's yeah. not, you know, like that may sound a little trivial, but that's just, that's the power of this practice. It can be used for any difficulty that you're going through, no matter how dark or not so dark. Yeah. I, I want to ask you, and let's go to something that, you know, gets mixed reviews and that is the upcoming holiday season. Now I must admit, I, I am here on the East Coast for about another week. You know, this has been a business trip for me. Um, we have networks out here. It's visiting, uh, go, finding out what people want more of. Um, uh, of course, our flagship stations on the West Coast in the Seattle area, this station here. Um, but one of the things I'm really struck by is the holiday season and how early it began here. Um, at the same time, uh, you know, we have this thing that goes on sometimes with getting ready for the holiday season. Some people so appreciate this time of year and other people not so much. And I'd like for you to talk a little bit about what your experience has been and working with clients that look at the holidays and every hot button in their body, in their system, everything that ever happened, whether it be, you know, your dog eating your favorite, pre it doesn't matter. Uh, tell us a little bit about how storytelling alchemy has worked for you and or your clients. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So the holidays can trigger so much for people because you know, we're giving the, we're given this Norman Rockwell expectation of of how a holiday is supposed to play out and how all of this familial love is supposed to be expressed and 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 so our expectations are a little skewed because everyone's human and everybody's family has issues and and they may even have childhood trauma that that hasn't been uh, dealt with in a family and and these times can be very very difficult for people. I had. I had a client who, um, whose father passed away on Christmas Day uh, when she was 14 years old. And, and she had been very, very close with her father, but it, it, it threw her into this, this rage over the fact that he was not only no longer going to be there for her on her favorite holiday, but that he ruined it for her, that she would never mm -hmm. have a good Christmas again because yeah. of this horrible memory that she had. And, and I love her story. And when I helped her, she was one of the women at the, at the charity. It's called Fresh Start in Phoenix that um, I helped with my class before the book was written even. And I love to talk about her particular way of doing it because I do say in the, uh, in the book a lot that I, I work with writing and my creative outlet is writing. 
but this can be applied also if you have a different creative outlet like, uh, art, you know, visual arts or, um, in her case, she was a musician. And she wrote a song and then arranged a group of songs to sing that, that kind of tracked the relationship that she and her dad had in order to start to feel the healing and in order to have something again to celebrate on that day. Um, and uh, in the last class, we do a share, and she sang this series of songs for us about her father culminating in the one that she wrote herself. And there was not a dry eye in the house, I can tell you that. And she, I have kept in contact with her, and she has um, absolutely, you know, uh, said that she has start she started healing that day and she started to you know have a different perspective on what Christmas could be and she says that every Christmas morning now she sings that whole little series of songs to start the day and kind of gives her spirit dad a, a greeting and goes from there um, so yeah it can have a profound effect on on your sadness over that over the holidays mm. whatever they are well. Well, and Renee, let's do this. I'd love to take a short break. When we come back, uh, Renee, I'd love to have you share some exercises, rituals, uh, just share some of the things that will help get things started. Love it. Let's take a short break, everyone. When we come back, get ready, get your recorder ready, get your notepad ready, whatever you have, and get ready to begin your storytelling alchemy. We'll be right back. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Love Living Radio Ignite Your Whole Being with Emily Perkins is a show for those looking to explore the sparkling magnificence of their inner selves. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific as Emily sheds a radiant light of love on the beauty and power that resides within you. Discussing love in all its forms through conversations that provoke awareness, curiosity, and expansion, Emily shares the unlimited power of love. For more information or to listen to this show, visit lovelivingholistics.com. Are you ready to create a life you'll really love? Then you'll want to tune in to the hit show Life Design Radio from Adversity to Awesome with Susan DiLorenzo. Live each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. No matter where you are in your adversity story, Life Design Radio has got you covered. Get ready to feel inspired, enlightened, and motivated. For more information about working with Susan, visit SusanDiLorenzo.com. Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio as we, Jason and Patricia, discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information about Living Lighter, visit www.livinglighter.org. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Are you ready to finally feel empowered and knowledgeable in your political stance? Let Marsha Padilla Goad educate you on exactly how important grassroots advocacy is in a relatable way to all perspectives. 
Tune in to Grassroots Advocacy Radio with Marsha every first Tuesday of the month at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Visit DynamicsInPublicAffairs.com. I think I got a little smooth jazz going on. Oh, right it's there smoother than that, Pat. Smoother than that. That's got the groove on it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Tr- tr- uh, t- uh, trivia. Trivia. Okay. Trivia moment. Uh-huh. You ready? Uh-huh. So, George Michael. I miss George yeah. a lot. I I was so saddened uh, upon his death. Mm-hmm. Uh, Careless Whispers. That song, right? Oh, yeah. It's a great song. George wrote that when he was 17. FYI, and his claim to fame in that song wasn't the song itself. It was the saxophone riff at the beginning. And he was always shocked about that, why people, out of all of the stuff in his career, that saxophone riff at the beginning of the song. But I was struck by that was a song came from the heart. As just a, a tidbit, Benny. Yeah, a lot, a lot. Just a little. Yeah, a lot of songs came from the heart for him. You know that. I do know that. I just love him. Um, that's what Renee's about, too. I mean, this book is about looking at the stories of our lives. Now, I got to say for you out there, right? When we take a look at our lives, those are stories from the heart. And changing a perspective sounds like something in the mind, but it's more than that. Renee, thank you so much for today. And I know we've got a bunch of questions. I know we've got, a, I know we got like five, five or six minutes left. Um, I'd love for you to share perhaps a short meditation or something to help people with telling right. the story. So the exercises in the book include little guided meditations and instructions for uh, making offerings, keeping altars, Finding the memories that um, are are the place that you might want to start with your first story, and you know, so it it can be difficult to look back at those those you know dark times in your life, and so I try to temper the practice with enough self care that you know that it's not damaging or that it's not too painful. And what we try to do with meditation is become very present in the moment. And the way I teach people to do that is by going into their senses um, in a very, you know, in a very focused way. So, if you will, I'll just do a quick Mm -hmm. little guided meditation for the listeners. So, if everybody just take a deep breath. And make yourself comfortable in your chair or wherever you are for a moment. Relax on the exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale and relax. And close your eyes. And become aware of the feeling of the air on your skin. Pay attention to the feeling where your clothing touches your body. How your feet are feeling in your shoes. How the surface that you're sitting on feels. Notice whether or not the air is moving. Pay attention to the temperature. Does it feel warm or cool? And pay attention to that for another moment. And then move on to sound. Open up your hearing. And see if there is an ambient sound where you are. Perhaps there's music playing. 
Perhaps there's a breeze and you can hear the rustle of leaves. Perhaps there's chatter around you. Just listen for a moment. Give it a few seconds and notice whether or not your hearing expands. And now take a moment to take a breath in. Breathe in through your nose. And notice whether there are any scents in the air. And finally, open your eyes and look around you. You may notice that the colors are more vivid than they were before you were present. Notice all of the colors, all of the shapes, all of the movements that you can see. And this is the way to begin a little bit of a meditation practice. You become absolutely present in the moment. It's a way of eliminating all of that chatter that goes on in our mind on a regular basis. And that's everyone. You're not unique in that. Everyone has that, what they call monkey mind, mm-hmm. where there's a million things happening all the time. So this is, that was just an example of one of the practices that we do in the book to bring you to your present moment. And then we kind of do a guided thing to bring you back to a past moment that you might want to work on as far as uh, it was difficult and you'd like to have a different perspective on it. Wow. So that's, that's just one of the little things. Very powerful. Very powerful. Renee, thank you so much for today. Thank you for everything uh, that thank you do. I, I absolutely appreciate the opportunity to be on your show. It was, it was wonderful. Well, one last question. What's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? And again, give out your website. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can be found at Um And I guess since it's not that easy to spell, maybe I'll spell it R-E-N-E-E-D-A-M-O-I-S-E-L-L-E.com. And my message is you, there's nothing that can stop you but you. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing that can propel you into your glorious future but you. And you do have that power. So know it and live it. I love it. And for those of you out there that are tuning in late, the book is called Storytelling Alchemy, Write Your Own Happy Ending. It is a call to action. It is one that we're going to play with much more as we move forward into one of the expansive energies of our time coming up, beginning this week, moving into next week, and then next year. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much. Benny, thank you. Thank you. Wow. And I want to thank all of you tuning us in and turning us on. As I said, you are the best listening audience on the planet. We'll see you next time. Audio was via a Skype call.